Well, there are a couple pieces of anti-piracy legislation working their way through the Capitol Hill process as we speak. The author of an alternative to that legislation is Senator Ron Wyden, a Democrat of Oregon, who joins us on the communicators. Senator Wyden, first off, what are your issues with the PROTECT and the SOPA anti-piracy uh, legislative pieces? Both of them are essentially using a bunker buster bomb when what you need is a laser beam. Look, there is no question that there are some bad actors out there. There are people who sell tainted Viagra or fake Rolexes or movies they don't own. And as far as I'm concerned, you ought to handcuff them. But these bills go way, way beyond you know, that. And particularly, they do a tremendous amount of damage to the architecture of the internet. I mean, basically what they do, is they turn websites into web cops. I mean, basically, you'd have you know, websites trying to monitor enormous you know, amounts of, of data. You know, YouTube alone gets like 24 hours of content you know, every, every second. It would be impossible to monitor. Nobody really even tries except for the Chinese and the Iranians. So, uh, saying that, that they go too far for you, what is your alternative proposal that you and Representative Daryl Issa, Republican of California, have proposed? What we do is offer an approach that's built around the proposition that we're essentially dealing with international commerce here. And we've got an agency that deals with physical goods, the International Trade Commission, and we think you use the same kinds of principles when uh, you're dealing with, uh, with digital goods. And those principles are essentially transparency, consistency, and due process. For example, there are hundreds of federal judges who are issuing opinions with respect to these issues. They widely diverge. You don't see that sort of thing at the International uh, Trade Commission. And yours, uh, your act is the, what is so-called the Open Act, and it cuts access to foreign rogue websites engaging in counterfeiting. When they engage in it willfully, and then we take a follow the money approach, so that when you see somebody who's willfully engaging in these kinds of copyright infringement you know, practices, you basically cut off the money, Visa and PayPal and the like, and also their ad network. You also use the trade laws, as you talked about, to restrict the rogue sites. How is that different from the SOPA and the PROTECT Act? The SOPA and PROTECT Acts, the essence of them is they start meddling with the domain name system. And that is the fundamental architecture to the net. Not only is it bad in terms of social media and business opportunities and the like, it would do a whole lot of damage to our effort to try to deal with cybersecurity. I mean, everything our country is trying to do in cybersecurity is built around the current internet architecture. And I think you're going to see substantial opposition, probably very soon, from the national security community, because we are hearing there's growing concern there. Well, we should also introduce Gautam Nagesh, who is our guest reporter this week on The Communicators. Thanks, Peter. Uh, Senator Wyden, you discussed your objections to PIPA and SOPA based on some of the concerns expressed by web companies. But we've also heard some very broad concerns from civil, civil libertarians, free speech advocates, people concerned that this bill would lead to censorship. And I believe you have cited some of those concerns. Can you explain them, please? The two bills, beyond the question of damaging the domain name uh, system, they really do implement a, a censorship regime. And it could be as simple as as a, uh, as a discussion uh, board. The language that's used here to kind of trigger the various efforts to uh, deal with the content uh, uh, owners is incredibly broad. It talks about facilitating copyright infringement. That could be practically anything. Now, I have to tell you, and people don't know this, I'm kind of sympathetic with the content you know, folks. My late father was a writer and an author. So all the time, I can go to websites, and I can see his books quoted at great length without uh, uh, citing him and, and the authorship of, of his publications. That doesn't mean that I'm going to rush out and pursue a whole lot of uh, approaches 
that particularly would start chipping away at the domain name system, which is the fundamental you know, architecture of, uh, of the net. But what this does, the domain name system and linking, I think will damage a lot of the openness and what I think is the appeal to all. I mean, we've got great concern about income inequality in this country. The internet is the place where you can do something about it. If you have a good idea, you can get it out uh, around, uh, around the world, and it's not just for the moneyed interest. Proponents of SOPA argue that they are not asking for any type of censorship, but rather they are asking for laws that apply in the physical world to be transferred online regarding stolen property and intellectual property violations. Can you explain exactly why asking Google, Bing, or another search provider to delete a link to copyrighted content would, be, would constitute censorship in your view? My view is, is we ought to go after the willful infringers and we've outlined in the open bill specifically how we do that which is to cut off their money if you try to get internet service providers search engines and others into the censorship business there's no way it can possibly work and it would in my view retard a lot of the innovation that we need in our country it also is a policy we've rejected now for 15 years going back to the fight against smut, and it was literally 15 uh, years ago, it was clear we were all horrified at some of the really ugly material that was getting in the hands of our kids. And at that time, the Congress was just starting to debate you know, internet policy, and there were two approaches that were offered. One was by the late Senator Exxon. It was largely to try to set up the kind of censorship regime that you're describing. The other is the approach that I and former Congressman Chris Cox offered on a bipartisan basis, which said, look, let's do everything we can to empower parents in the private sector with filters and other kinds of tools to weed out some of this horrible uh, material that was going to get uh, to very young uh, children uh, otherwise, but let's not hold uh, the intermediaries liable for some content that they really presumably wouldn't have even known much about most of the time. And it's often said that the fact that we, we weren't uh, holding the intermediaries liable is what caused the growth of social media and a lot of these websites over the last 15 years. There's a better way to go, and for more than 15 years, starting with Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act, the law that I wrote, we have rejected that approach. As you said, Google in particular has come under fire during this debate basically as a gatekeeper to the internet at the hearing they were the only witness that testified against the SOPA Act in the House and they were really the target of criticism from lawmakers who repeatedly referenced their ability to find pirated content on the internet uh, why do you think Google is specifically become sort of the face of the opposition or the target of this legislation and do you think that your colleagues in both the House and the Senate understand the nature of the search business well enough to make those sorts of determinations? Well, ob ob obviously the Senate and the House are just getting familiar with, with these issues. Uh, uh, copyright uh, law, the Digital Millennium Copyright Act and, and, and the like, I, I guess you could say it's not on the lips of every single member of Congress, but this debate is really not, in my view, about the big powerful companies. This has often been framed as a debate between Silicon Valley and, and Hollywood. So this is not primarily about Google and Facebook. This is about whether we're going to have pro-innovation policies so that we'll have future Googles and future Facebooks. And when you look at these bills, you can take the fundamental proposition about the American dream, which uh, people call two guys in a garage, you pass these bills and you're going to have perhaps two people in a garage, but you're going to have a whole upstairs full of lawyers telling them whether or not they can open a website. That is not going to be good for innovation. This is C-SPAN's Communicators Program. We're talking with Senator Ron Wyden, a Democrat of Oregon, about his bill, which is called the OPEN Act, Online Protection and Enforcement of Digital Trade Acts legislation. And it is a different version of what we have been talking about, the SOPA and the PIPA or the PROTECT Act, which are Senate and House bills, and they're very similar. Now, the Stop Online Privacy Act, sponsored by Lamar Smith, who is chairman of the Judiciary Committee in the House, uh, 
cuts access to foreign rogue websites engaging in counterfeiting, uses the Justice Department and federal courts to restrict rogue sites, focuses on foreign sites and leaves existing law to block domestic sites engaging in counterfeiting and piracy, and advertisers and credit card companies must stop doing business with rogue sites. Senator Wyden, the difference there seems to be you're using the ITC and uh, Senator Smith and, uh, I'm sorry, Representative Smith and Senator Leahy's bills would use the courts. What, what is the problem with using the courts? Well, for, first of all, the single biggest difference between the two bills, both of them acknowledge that you ought to go after the bad actors who are engaging in copyright infringement. Our approach, the open bill, does not involve censorship and it doesn't involve dismantling the domain name systems. We believe that so much of the growth in this country and our ability to innovate and the social media sites and the ability for folks uh, to communicate depends on the architecture of, uh, of the internet being preserved and strengthened. That's what it's going to take to deal with these cyber threats and that's why the national security community is so concerned about the PIPA bill and the SOAP, SOPA bill and that's the single biggest difference. Yes, we do think that there's fundamentally a question of you know, international uh, commerce uh, uh, rather than narrow legalistic you know, issues that ought to be brought up in the judicial system. But the single biggest difference is we do not dismantle, do not undo the fundamental DNS system, the architecture, damage linking, uh, that sort of thing. And I also want viewers to know, because we haven't talked about it, I put a hold, a public hold, on the Senate bill in December of uh, 2010. Had I not done that, it would have passed right at that time because people weren't uh, aware. I've also put a public hold on the Senate bill that was passed uh, uh, late in the spring of this year. I've made it clear that I will filibuster with every ounce of my strength against this bill. I have not done that uh, before, but I think this is very ill-advised uh, legislation, both from the standpoint of what it would do to innovation, what it would do to entrepreneurs, what it would do uh, to small businesses, and I think you will see growing concern from the national security. Have community. there been companies that have endorsed your legislation? A number. I mean, certainly a number of the technology uh, firms have been very uh, interested. Our bill is newer, and that's one of the reasons why I hope that uh, the Senate uh, uh, schedule will not immediately go to the uh, PIPA bill so that we'll have a chance to walk through uh, for colleagues what our legislation is all about. There's a great deal of interest in our approach as well in the House with Daryl Issa's, Zoe Lofgren, Jared Polis, a big bipartisan collection of thoughtful representatives, but they haven't had enough time to really walk the House uh, through it, and I hope given the concern that has emerged uh, over the last uh, week or, or 10 days, we'll get that time. Has Google and the Googles and the Bings of the world endorsed your Largely, legislation? Largely, yes. They've sent a letter saying that they favor the, the, uh, the approach. I'm sure if you ask them, they'll say they're looking at you know, various and sundry details. But again, for uh, viewers and listeners, there's no debate here that copyright infringement is a serious you know, question. We've got a system for dealing with it now. It's called Notice and Takedown, Digital Millennium uh, Copyright Act. It's not perfect. There are ways in which, on a bipartisan basis, we can improve on it. That's what the open legislation is all about. But the big difference, the fundamental difference between our bill and the other is that we would not do all the damage to the architecture of the internet. We would not tamper with the domain name system. We would not start a censorship or blacklisting program. We would not turn websites uh, into web cops. And just to make it clear that Lamar Smith, the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee and the author of the SOPA um, legislation has been invited on this program as well. Gautam Nagesh of the Hill. Now you referred to some of the political support for your legislation. Obviously Protect IP has considerable support as well. We saw it pass the committee, Senate Commerce Committee fairly uh, with bipartisan support and you threatened the filibuster. First of all, do you believe that the bill as it now stands has a strong chance of passing the Senate? And secondly, um, 
Can you speak to the support for the bill? Very strong from the entertainment industry, the retail industry. Um, do you think they can be convinced that the Open Act is the correct solution? We know that we are up against one of the most sophisticated and savvy and powerful lobbies in the United States. And they've been at it a long time. They've poured millions of dollars into their various and sundry lobbying and, and campaign efforts. And uh, frankly, we, we know that our side is going to have to fight uh, above our weight. This is going to be a, a tough battle. But if you look at what's happened in the last uh, couple, of, uh, couple of weeks, uh, certainly well over a million Americans have signed petitions against these, uh, these bills. And people are coming to understand what some of these issues uh, are all about. Regrettably, uh, some of our opponents have a long track record of defending uh, outdated business models, which are essentially business as, as usual. It was not very long ago when the head of the Motion Picture Association said that the VCR was to the movie industry what, uh, what the Boston Strangler was to women home alone. And that was just a preposterous kind of comment because the VCR made a tremendous amount of money for the movie industry. Now, we've seen a lot of heated retort from both sides in this debate, as you just referenced. But we've also seen an unprecedented level of public engagement in intellectual property issues. Tumblr, Mozilla, Wikipedia, we're seeing web companies really mobilize their users to voice opposition to both Protect IP and SOPA. Why do you think the public is so engaged on this? And have you been hearing from the public in large amounts? I, I have. And I think, it, I think it's fair, fair to say that um, copyright and trademark issues, which historically would not exactly be household words. You would not have people kibitzing about uh, copyright uh, law around the kitchen table. People really have followed this, and they've followed it with growing uh, concern because there, there is an awareness of the stakes. I mean, we had a big debate about you know, network uh, neutrality, for, for example. This goes way beyond network ne ne neutrality. And in fact, this goes uh, to the architecture of the internet and not just whether once you uh, sign up for your internet service provider, you get to go where you want, you know, when, when you want. This is a question of whether in the name of dealing with a serious you know, problem, just like the challenge was with SMUT you know, 15 years ago, are you going to do something smart that really goes in and attacks the, the uh, problem with, uh, with a laser beam? Or are you going to do something that does an enormous amount of collateral damage? And I think if uh, these two bills, the alternative bills, SOPA and PIPA, were passed in its present form, they would do a great deal of damage to the internet. Senator Wyden, your former colleague Chris Dodd is now head of the Motion Picture Association of America and on the different side of the issue he's strongly in favor of SOPA and PIPA. Have you talked with him about this legislation? Well of course under the ethics you know laws he's not you know allowed to you know communicate with legislators. I see him from time to time he always looks uh, very can't talk can't talk and it's in a sense you know, too bad because he has been uh, a coalition builder in his years as a legislator. And I think there's a real opportunity to try to bring those who have tech savvy and, you know, the content creators and say, let's try to come up with something that makes sense all around. The fact is there are products that do that. If you look at, at uh, products like Netflix and iTunes and services and the like, these are ones that show you can be successful and have innovation and, and content, and that's the kind of thing that uh, I'd like to try to promote. What is it about Oregon? Several uh, Oregonians are very involved in tech issues. Uh, you, uh, Senator, former Senator Smith is head of the National Association of Broadcasters. Greg Walden on the House side is a Republican from Oregon. Well, we're, we're, we're freedom folks. We, we like the First Amendment. We like to be able to communicate. We like to debate. And we're pretty egalitarian. We like everybody to have a shot, not just the moneyed interests. And that's what the internet uh, represents. Of course, Congressman Walden had a small uh, radio station uh, for quite some time in the family. Uh, Senator Smith uh, representing the broadcast. I can tell you what happened in my case is when I became Oregon's first new United States Senator in 1996, I said, look, I'm going to do everything I can for the forced products industry and our traditional kind of industries. But I said, in addition to that, I'm going to try to find some new opportunities 
for us to really lead and innovate. And it always kept coming back to technology. For example, I'm now the chairman of the Senate Finance Committee on International Trade. I think the internet is the shipping lane of the 21st century. So I'm very cons interested and uh, anxious, for example, to promote the export of our digital goods. Senator Thune and I have introduced a bipartisan bill uh, to do that as well. So if you look at the areas I've focused on, authoring the uh, Communications Decency Act so that we wouldn't hold the intermediaries uh, uh, liable and, and damage uh, innovation. I wrote the Internet Tax Freedom Bill, in effect, twice. Uh, the Digital Signatures Law, which people who are viewing and listening often use when they're, uh, in effect, signing real estate uh, uh, documents. And now a group of us were involved in the Y2K le legislation. I've tried to look at policies that would ensure that we do no harm, which is why I'm concerned about SOPA and PIPA and all the damage that would be done to the domain name system, and then try to lay out a strategy for tapping some of the op opportunities like uh, digital trade. Senator Ron Wyden, Democrat of Oregon, who is the author of the Open Act, anti-piracy legislation. Thank you for being on The Communicators.